what's up everyone today we're going to talk about the cost of living in franklin tennessee so we have a lot of people researching looking to move here um, they're thinking about the cost of housing taxes groceries gas all the things so today we're going to talk about what some of those costs are and what it truly costs to live here in franklin compared to the rest of the united states so be sure and stay tuned so if this is your first time visiting my channel my name is jen grambling and i'm a realtor here in the nashville williamson county area putting out weekly videos just trying to help you get more familiar with everything related to moving, living here in the Nashville area. So if any of that applies to you and you find that interesting, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be the first to see these videos as they're coming out. All right, and the reason you came here is to find out the cost of living in Franklin, Tennessee. So let's jump right into that. Okay, so I wanna start off just talking a little bit about the actual cost of living here in Franklin, compare it to the national averages, things like that. I think there's a little bit of a misconception that people can move here and it's gonna be really inexpensive to live in Tennessee. And while there are definitely places that are less expensive to live, Franklin is not necessarily one of those places. Forbes has compiled a list of the richest counties by state and Williamson County happens to be the most expensive county in the state of Tennessee. And that happens to also be where Franklin is located, but it definitely is not an inexpensive place to live. So you're gonna to wanna to take that into consideration if you're considering this as a place where you're looking to buy a home, um, some of the costs are gonna be a little bit elevated. If you take a look at bestplaces.net, you can see that the national average, if the national average is 100, they go ahead and give a ranking for other cities and how that compares to the national average. So if you just look at the overall cost of living, we are at 135 compared to 100 as the national average. So you can see just our overall cost of living is quite a bit higher. It's 35% higher than the national average to live in Franklin. And there are some things that are kind of on par with the rest of the US, which would be like groceries, healthcare, which comes in a little bit lower, but you'll see that our housing cost is double that of the national average. It's 203.5, whereas the rest of Tennessee is 71.2. The rest of Tennessee is gonna be lower, but not necessarily here in Franklin. So I will say it's not necessarily inexpensive to live here in Franklin. Let's face it, it's not as expensive as a lot of other big cities out there, um, but for the state of Tennessee, it is definitely one of the most expensive places that you could pick to live. So I know a lot of people are moving here for that small town charm and feeling like they're living, you know, in a little bit of a smaller country town with the benefits of Nashville being nearby, but you aren't gonna get that big price break by living in Franklin. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about living here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the housing costs here in Franklin. So this is obviously the number one thing that I talk about on a daily basis being in real estate is the housing prices and the housing market, which has been a little nuts here. I know it's been a little crazy everywhere else, but our housing prices here, as I said, at least according to realtor.com, have gone up almost 27% in the last year, making our median home price $747,000. This has gone up substantially over the last couple of years. You can check out my pros and cons video of Franklin if you wanna hear more about why these housing prices are going up and why so many people are moving here. There's a lot of pros to being here but it has caused that price to increase quite a bit. Okay, so again, on average, median home price, $747,000, and that's gonna be about $252 per square foot on average. So what is that gonna get you? So that's gonna get you a house that's about 2,900, 3,000 square feet, three to four bedrooms, two to three baths. Usually I would say on probably about a third of an acre or so. So I know I have people from California who move here and they're like, we want land. Um, and to them, that means a third of an acre. So this is a generous lot, you know, for a lot of people. Um, for other people, they come here wanting more of like an acre or even more than that. So not necessarily what they're looking for, but that just gives you kind of a rough idea. You're gonna have, you know, a cute house in a nice neighborhood, about 3,000 square feet for that $747,000. Now, of course, there's other options. We have townhomes. You can probably get into townhomes and condos anywhere starting in the high 300s, 400,000, you know, all the way up to obviously in the millions. You can get some beautiful brownstones down near downtown Franklin for, you know, in the millions, 800,000 to a million. Um, so those are gonna be really, really nice and really walkable to that cute downtown Franklin living. Um, and then you can also get huge equestrian properties out near Leapers Fork. It's absolutely beautiful out there. A lot of people do wanna live in Leapers Fork. I have a lot of people ask for that. It's pretty rural out there, country, really beautiful horse country, but you are gonna spend a lot more to live out in that Leapers Fork area. So probably closer to the millions if you're wanting a bigger property. You can always find exceptions to that, obviously for much smaller homes, um, but I even see homes on the market in Leapers Fork right now 
a million, 1.2 for one bedroom, 900 square feet. Now granted, that is a super cute property that I would love to sell. So if you're interested in it, be sure to call me. Typically you're gonna be in the higher millions for a nice property out in Leapers Fork. But obviously we have a whole range of houses out here. We can find something in your price point, something that you would love. So if you have more questions on that, be sure to ask me. I can certainly answer those in more depth. Okay, so I know what you're most excited to talk about and that's taxes. There's no state income tax in Tennessee and people are pretty excited about that. Um, so as far as state income tax goes, that's gonna be a zero. So that's really great. Um, but do we make up for it in other places? Yes. As you can see, our sales tax in Franklin is gonna cost you 9.75%, which is kind of a big hit. They do have one day a year, which is pretty exciting, which is a sales tax free day. So you might wanna load up and go buy everything you can on that day. But our sales tax is gonna be kind of high, but in my opinion, don't really know that it's gonna offset um, that lack of state income tax, which is a really great thing. And property taxes. So property taxes are obviously going to figure into your final house payment um, and what that's gonna cost you over the years. Property taxes here are super reasonable. So our tax rate here in Franklin is gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of like, 2.2% to 2.5%. So for the purpose of these calculations, I'm just gonna split the difference. We'll call it 2.4, but depending on where you are within city limits or in the county only, um, it will change a little bit, uh, but just as a rough estimate, it's gonna be somewhere in there, which sounds similar to other states, except for the way that we calculate it. So what we do is we take the value of the house, the appraised value, um, and you take that and you multiply that times 0.25. So you're gonna take a quarter of the value of the appraised value of the house and that is what you're gonna multiply that tax percentage against. So for instance, if you have a $600,000 house, you're gonna take that amount and you're gonna multiply that, you're gonna take a quarter of that amount, which would be about $150,000, and you're gonna multiply that times the tax rate. So just for our example purposes, it's gonna be about 2.4%. So if you take that 150,000 and you multiply that by 2.4%, you're gonna get about $3,600 in taxes per year for that house, which is pretty great for living here in Franklin. So if you wanna take that same example, we'll say a house of a million dollars, multiply that times 0.25%, you get 250,000. And multiply that times your 2.4%, and you're gonna have about $6,000 in taxes on a million dollar home here in Franklin. So really not bad as far as property taxes are concerned. I do hear what other people are paying in some other states and it is quite a bit. So really happy with the property tax that we pay here in Tennessee, makes it a lot more affordable. Combined with that higher price of the housing costs, maybe that'll even out based off of where you're choosing to not live. If you come here, yeah, you're gonna pay a little more for a house, but you might be paying less in property taxes, um, which can make a really big difference. Okay, and we can't forget to talk about car registration because car registration in some states is astronomical. I know in Colorado, we used to pay upwards of $1,000 for our newer cars to register them per year. Um, so here, it's a really great relief when you come here. Brace yourself. It's gonna be a whopping $65 to register your car here in Franklin. Get your plates, tags, everything you need. 65 bucks, that's gonna do it. So you can get away with that. Um, ad valorem tax that some of those states, I'm pretty sure California has it, no Colorado does. So you're gonna get rid of that tax and you're gonna be $65 to register your car. So I'm a big fan of that. That's saving me a ton of money. Okay, and so what about homeowner's insurance? Is that gonna cost you a lot more here? No, it's right about at the national average. So the national average for the US household annually for home insurance in Tennessee is gonna be about $1,200 with a US average price per month of about $101 per month. The Tennessee annual average is about $1,233 and the average price per month about $103 per month. So it's right exactly where it should be. Now that's for Tennessee. So in Franklin, is it gonna be more expensive? No, actually Franklin average annual homeowner's insurance cost per year would be about $1,086, so a little under that actually. So I do find my homeowner's insurance to be a little bit less here. Now, of course, that's gonna be completely dependent upon what kind of policy you have, what kind of house you have, um, history and claims and all those kinds of things, but that's just an average number to give you an idea of what you might be paying monthly, you know, maybe around $100 or so per month 
um, or even a little less for your homeowner's insurance. So that's really encouraging. And how about car insurance? How's that gonna stack up to the rest of the country? According to Insurify, as you can see here, for one car, I would say this is probably for someone with a great record, probably the lowest you can get it is around $65 per month. But I'd say on average, you could spend about $100 per person, you know, give or take for your auto insurance with a decent driving record um, and probably the standard amount of deductibles and those sorts of things. Okay, and what about gas prices? Now I know gas prices figure into a lot of people's budget, especially people who have to drive a lot. And I know, especially in some of those coastal areas that gas is really getting high in price. So let's take a look at some of the gas prices here in Franklin. So I think we all know that Costco and Sam's are some of the best places where you can buy gas. And so at Sam's Club, if you're looking here on Gas Buddy, they show you some of the best prices for gas around. If you're looking at Sam's Club for regular unleaded all the way down to $2.79 a gallon, which is pretty great. All the way up to around $3.29 per gallon. Looks like that's about average. $3.19 to $3.29 per gallon. And then if you're a premium gas person, you're gonna be looking at about $3.79 per gallon all the way up to about $4.14 per gallon. Um, so I still think, I mean, I know gas prices have gone up a ton in the last year or so, but here it's not as bad as other places, so that's really reassuring. So 279 a gallon, I can do that. I'm not really sure that I have time to wait in the lines for that 279 per gallon, but I definitely want to. Okay, so what are the rest of your bills gonna look like? So I'm just gonna talk about what my bills are. So my house is about 3,900 square feet and you can kind of make your comparison off of that. And as you can see, according to this same chart, Tennessee comes in a little bit under the national average. So we're not gonna be super high. I'm probably gonna be about what you're used to and most of the rest of the parts of the country, hopefully lower than some others. But so I pay my gas and my electric bill separately. Um, and I can tell you that my gas bill is pretty consistent every single month at about $26 a month to $29 a month, almost every month since I've lived here. My electricity comes separate and I'm gonna just show you my actual electricity bill and my usage chart. So I just pulled this up on Middle Tennessee Electric. Um, as you can see from this chart, but I do use more energy than the average person. My numbers are kind of way above it, but I do run my air conditioner a lot in the summer. I like my house really cold. So people complain a lot in my house they want me to turn it down, um, but I just want them to put on a hoodie because I really want to not be hot and I really want to suck that humidity out of the air. So I do run my air conditioner a lot. But as you can see, my bill is usually around 240 to 245 a month for my electricity. And that is because of my air conditioning. So that will go down here in the next couple of months. That would put my bills on average around 280 a month for my gas and electric combined. So if you like your house really cold like me, have a similar square footage, then that might be what you can kind of expect to pay. But yeah, just for comparison's sake, that's where I'm at with my electricity bill. Okay, and your water bills, again, here they're separated. So you're gonna pay your sewer separate from your regular water bill. And typically our water bills around here are about $80 a month, um, sewer being another 50 to $60 per month. But we also have an irrigation system to water our lawn. So that probably doesn't help very much. I'm not actually sure that we need it since it rains so much, but we do seem to run it since it's here. But guessing that your water bill and sewer combined should be somewhere in the neighborhood of $130 to $150. Okay, so what about your internet? I would say it's pretty typical, no matter where you are in the country, I could be wrong about that. Um, but we pay about 100 to 120 bucks a month for our internet service, and that is for internet and Wi-Fi. That is what we paid when we were in Colorado, it's what we pay in East Tennessee, so I feel like it's pretty standard. You know, we have great high-speed internet. I think it's pretty comparable to the rest of the country, so nothing exciting to see there. I actually don't have cable. We do Hulu Live, Netflix, all those sorts of things, Amazon Video, but if you're a cable person, I think it's pretty on par with the rest of the country, so really nothing exciting. So I think you can expect it to be right about the same. Okay, so there's a brief overview for you of the cost of living here in Franklin that kind of gives you a little bit of a better idea. So as you can see, I mean, it's definitely not gonna be the least expensive place that you can live, but actually I do think it's pretty affordable minus the housing costs. So I think the housing costs is really what's gonna drive things up, but everything else I really feel like is very affordable. Between your taxes, your food, your car registration, your insurance, all those things are gonna cost you a little bit less here, I feel like, than other parts of the country. And so when you factor in that higher cost of housing, it may even be a wash for you. So definitely do the math on that and see. What I will say is even if it does cost more to live in Franklin, it's definitely worth it just for the quality of life, 
the people and all the pros of living here. Like I said, check out my video, pros and cons of Franklin. And I have lots of other videos on Franklin too for you to check out if you're interested in the area. But if you do have any more questions, be sure to reach out. You can text me, call me, just reach out to me with whatever questions you have. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you're coming in town and you're looking for a place to be, let me know, I'll be happy to help. And again, if these videos are helpful to you, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be the first to see these videos as they're coming out. Thanks so much and I'll see you on the next video.